Hey there everyone, Eddie Gray here with thepipenook.com. Here I am in the West Parlor at Gray Manor. So today I wanted to talk to you about something I got in the mail just this past week. Uh, I wanted to spare you the box opening, uh, but um, I do have a, a pipe here to show you. Now, I own a pipe store. Why the heck would I buy any more pipes? Well, the pipe nook isn't the be-all, end-all of pipes. Uh, it was never intended to be that. Probably never will be that. Um, it's intended to be a good starting point uh, and a good midpoint. You could really, honestly, you know, only buy the pipes and tobaccos and smoke those pipes and tobaccos that I carry and be happy the rest of your life. But if you catch the collecting bug, I know that's not going to be the case. So um, I have several pipes uh, from brands and tobaccos of brands that I don't carry on the pipe nook. Um, and this pipe would be one of those. So uh, uh, two, three weeks back, I made a video about... Um, I think it was called The Truth About Pipe Filters, and I went on and on about, you know, uh, probably 20 minutes or more about pipe filters, all the pros and, and cons, and one of the cons, one of the very few things that I, I said about pipe filters that I wish were different is that um, because my preference has become filtered pipes, uh, I very rarely smoke the artisan pipes and get to enjoy those pipes in my collection. Um, and I had a few of my viewers tell me, hey, there are some uh, pipe artisan pipe makers out there who will drill your pipes uh, to that specification if that's what you want, if you want a 9mm filtered uh, artisan pipe. Uh, there were two people in particular that struck me that I decided to go ahead and order from. One of them I'm going to present to you today. So here is his business card. Right there. J. Mouton, Custom Pipes. Otherwise known as the Bayou Guru on YouTube. I think and on Instagram. At the Bayou Guru. There you go. So, branded on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, Jay Mouton, Mouton, I'm not the best at French words, y'all. Um, I'm a Florida boy, but he made this pipe. I contacted him and he made this pipe. Um, we went a little back and forth about what I might be looking for in a pipe and what he wanted to do and pricing and all that. Um, and we landed on this, so let me go ahead and show it to you. You guys know um, I like my green stems, and occasionally I have, I'll have i wind up with a blue stem, but this is a green stemmed pipe. Nice little light colored band there. And then we have the Morta. A nice sandblasted Morta. Um, slightly bent, squash tomato type shape. Beautiful sandblast, um, almost looks like a like a golf wedge with that little that little piece right there. You can kind of see it. You see that? But uh, I told him I really liked the way that Morta um, you can it can give you some really drastic uh, sandblasts with with the wood grooves, and he went nuts with it. That is a beautiful sandblast. And it also has what I would call stria or striatia. I never can remember the right word for that, but uh, you can see there are cross lines in the grain, almost like a seashell that I really dig. Uh, yeah, Morta makes a beautiful cross grain, especially when you sandblast it. This is a gorgeous pipe. Thanks so much, Mr. Bayou Guru. I think his first name is Jason, don't hold me to that. I've watched a few of his videos, but I'm, I don't get to watch a ton of YouTube videos anymore, being so busy with the day job and with the pipe nook. Um, but he may just go by Jay. So anyway, 
Just wanted to show this pipe to y'all. If you are looking for an artisan pipe, particularly Morta or Briar, uh, check out the Bayou Guru. Um, and specifically, if you want it to be, if your preference is a 9mm filtered pipe, he can do it. Um, you can see right there, it's drilled for 9mm filter. One thing I will say is it is a pretty tight fit. There we go. It'll get in there, but it's fairly tight. There we go. Um, now what that means is, if you're smoking really wet tobacco and this filter gets sopping wet, you might have trouble getting it out of this, this uh, tenon. Full disclosure, I've already smoked this twice. So um, once filter came out okay, second time I had a humdinger of a time getting the filter completely out. It wound up tearing on me and then I had to jam something down through the stem. Um, if you wait for it to dry out, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, or maybe if you try to do it right after you smoke, it might not be that big of a deal. But I, I had let mine sit for a couple hours and came back to it. Um, anyway, I'm going to load up some Chenay's cake. I think that would be a good uh, tobacco to smoke in this thing. I don't have it broken up. I've got a little bit of a, it's a crumble cake, as you can see. So I'm going to break up some of this and load it up. Mmm, that Chenay's cake is pungent with Parique. Now, there was a time I didn't think I would find a blend that had too much Parique. Um, but after smoking straight Perique, I can tell you that is too much Perique. Um, and Cornell and Deal has a blend. It's kind of buried right now over here in my stack. But they have a blend called Exclusive that I used to carry, no longer carry. It's kind of a specialty blend. It is 75%, no, 50% Perique. It's 50% Perique, and that is a, a lot of Perique. Um, the Chenay's cake is under that somewhat, but fairly close. It's probably the closest uh, that I've come across to the exclusive when it comes to Perique content. But this is kind of like the tipping point for me, that Chenay's cake. If you go any, any higher than that in Perique content, it's a bit much. Um, some people might, may say that about the Chenay's cake, but if you're a Perique lover... Uh, I would say give it a try. All right, let's see. I am loaded up. All right, there's my charring light. I don't know if you guys have noticed me doing that, but I'm looking under my glasses these days to see up close when I light my pipe. The eyes are going, y'all. I'm thinking about getting LASIK. I've heard about, I heard somebody um, tell her story about how she got something called monovision, which I don't understand. I would think it would be called dual vision. But what they did was they corrected one of her eyes for distance sight and one of her eyes for close up sight. And I was like, don't you walk around all the time just with those two things fighting each other? And she said, no, they, they warn you that you'll get headaches for a few days. She said, after two days, my brain had rewired itself uh, to compensate for that. She said, I can see my kids playing on the ball field and I can see 
tiny writing close up. I'm like, dude, sign me up. So I'm thinking about that. Anyway, my family just showed up. I heard them pull up outside. So this may be a good time to cut things short. Just wanted to show off my gorgeous new pipe from the Bayou Guru. Guru. <laughs> I messed up his name, kind of like when people call my shop the Pipe Nuke. It's Nook. Rhymes with hook. Mm. Anyway, I guess we will leave it at that. Glad y'all got to see me. We'll chat with you later.